Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to become a front-end developer in 2021. Front-end development, back-end development, development in general has become so popular, very in demand, and a lot of you have been asking how to become specifically a front-end and back-end developer. So today we are going to be covering steps you need to take to become a front-end developer. This is coming from someone as myself who is self-taught and then went to a coding bootcamp. So I definitely have been there. I started out with front-end development. So I'm going to share with you some of the things, the steps that I took along the way, as well as now a software developer and been working in the field for quite a while. I want to share with you some different tips or really steps that you can take to become a successful front-end developer. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. And also, shout out to some of these wonderful subscribers here. Thank you all for your support, your wonderful questions and comments. I always read all my comments and do my best to respond to them all. So thank you so much for your support. And without further ado, let's get started. Before we start talking about how to become a front-end developer, let's review exactly what is a front-end developer. A front-end developer, or also known as front-end web developer, is someone who is responsible for the design and implementation of the interface. Now, before you come at me in the comments being like, we do so much more as front-end developers than that, I'm not saying that, but according to Google, according to the definitions, that is what a front-end developer is. And I wanna be very, uh, very highlight right out of the gate that front-end developers do a lot of very difficult and complex things. I'm not saying that, but at the end of the day, it is responsible for the interface, what the user interacts with, what they see on the screen. Uh, to sum it up is what a front-end developer is. Also, I want to note that nowadays there is this trend where between front-end developers and back-end developers, there are these blurred lines. A lot of times now, front-end developers are starting to handle more and more of things that the back-end developers would traditionally handle. And it's kind of continuing to become more and more intertwined where more people are recognizing themselves as full stack developers. Um, but I you know, want to clarify for this video, we are focusing on simply front end. Okay, so now that we have the definition covered as to exactly what a front end developer is, let's start with the building blocks. The first thing you are going to need to know if you come from no coding background, no experience, is maybe it's not very exciting, but you're going to get, you have to start with the basics, learn HTML and learn CSS. I know, I know it's not the most exciting. A lot of times people want to start with Python or JavaScript and get right into it. But the reality is before you do anything, you need to go back to basics and start with HTML and CSS. And once you have a strong you know, foundation, basics of that, you can move on to the next step. The next step is to learn a programming language. Although there are many different languages you can learn that would be great for front-end development, for this step-by-step -step tutorial on things you need to do to become a front-end developer, we are going to talk about JavaScript. This is the language that I first learned and I'm so happy I did. A lot of people um, have very strong opinions on JavaScript, but the reality is it's not going anywhere and it's a language that is heavily used on the front end and there are so many different frameworks and libraries that are used with it that it is definitely an in-demand language that you should pick up. Here are some topics that you should learn around JavaScript. First being JavaScript building blocks, so things such as variables, conditions, functions. Second being JavaScript objects and prototypes. Third being how to add JavaScript to your HTML. Fourth being object-oriented JavaScript or OOP. Next, you need to learn about the DOM, document object model, and lastly, debugging your JavaScript code. Now, to start learning JavaScript, there are tons of different free resources online. When I was learning, I used Free Code Camp a lot, especially because they have um, not only different tutorials on JavaScript, but also they have really great resources for uh, solving different kind of whiteboarding algorithms around JavaScript, which I found very helpful. But there are also so many other resources out there. Udemy is another great one. Um, Udemy, you do have to pay for. I would always wait until there were really good sales going on. Um, even YouTube, if you just search up uh, JavaScript tutorials, there are some really great ones. Another resource I used a lot was by Wes Boss. He had um, 
31 days of vanilla JavaScript and it was a free course. I'll link it down below because that was a really great resource and I think it was 30 days um, for to build different projects that were about 15 minutes long every day so it didn't feel that long. I'll link it down below. Okay, so now we have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript completed. We have them under our belt, we know what's going on, we're building our uh, ladder to getting to become a front-end developer. What is next? The next step would be to learn a front-end framework. Things such as React, Vue, Angular, there are so many out there. Those are probably the top three, um, but there are more coming out every day. So by the time you watch this video, I'm sure there'll be a new popular one. But don't let that overwhelm you. For myself, I know that was something that really overwhelmed me when I was starting out was I'm learning React, but then Vue was coming along and it was so popular, so should I switch and learn that? And it just kept on feeling as though right when I started learning a front-end framework, something else came out that was more popular. And that can be kind of tricky because it will really play with you uh, mentally as far as you feel as though you need to switch what you're currently learning because something else came out. And I want to tell you, don't do that. If you stick to something, commit to learning one of these uh, frameworks or libraries, just commit to it, learn it. Because once you learn one, the learning the others will be substantially easier or in my experience because you already have the foundation even if one is very different than the other you know how to learn if that makes sense you've already gone through the process once of learning about a framework that to pick up another you know some of the basics that might carry over that are required and it makes it a lot easier so even if there is a job application out there that says you need to know Vue, but you took the time to learn, for instance, React, don't let that stop you from A, applying, or B, thinking that you need to now go and spend X amount of hours cramming in to learn uh, Vue. Rather, show that you can do React and how well you can do it, because that will show that you have the foundational skills and your learnings can be transferred over. Speaking of learnings, the next tip after you have done HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you've mastered a front-end framework or library, the next step is what do you have to show for it? And that's where building mini projects come in. And I emphasize the word mini because a lot of times people start by thinking they need to build these grandiose projects, especially when they are about to apply for jobs or their first jobs and have these big visions of what they're going to build. But in turn, nothing ever gets followed through because it seems so overwhelming to actually build these projects. And I'm speaking from experience. I had all these big ideas of things that I wanted to build when I was starting out and never completed them because it just got to a point where it was too overwhelming. And then I started taking a step back and just building mini projects. And it made me feel A, way more productive, B, I could see end results. I was actually building things from beginning to end and executing them to completion, which feels so good as a person and you feel like you're actually getting somewhere and those mini projects are things that you can put on your github put on your portfolio and speak about end to end when you are doing the interview process speaking about building projects my next tip is to contribute to open source projects open source refers to software whose code is available to the public so you can access this code you can modify it or request to modify it um, improve it change it and play around with it and it's such a fun way to Feel like you're contributing to the community. Also, the last thing I want to highlight, and I try to always highlight this because we talk a lot about uh, technical skills or um, you know less about soft skills and more about hard skills, but I want to highlight the importance of while you are learning these and developing these skills, don't forget to continue to work on your soft skills. And I know you're probably like, Tip, I can't, I don't have all the time to work on everything and work on my soft skills on top of that, but just keep that in mind, especially when you get to the interviewing stage to continue to work on your soft skills and learn how to speak about your technical skills, but also speak about yourself and where you see yourself going, um, how you can contribute to this company or talk about your projects, different things like that, because I see way too many developers start focusing only on their technical skills and in turn, a lot of times end up losing their soft skills. Okay, those are my tips for becoming a front-end developer in 2021. You can definitely do it by self-teaching, going to a coding bootcamp, having a background in computer science, wherever you come from, if it's something you want to do, just take the right steps and you will get there. And if you have any other questions about becoming a front-end developer, please let me know in the comments below. 
And as always, I will see you all next time and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Okay, bye everyone.